Okay, welcome to a tutorial on using um, on using ORCAD 1616 in order to do P Spice. And what I want to do is I'm going to walk you through using ORCAD in order to build a model. And this is going to be for a DC circuit analysis. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up uh, ORCAD. And so we will go to our cadence directory and we'll open up uh, ORCAD release 16.6. And the file we want is ORCAD captures the program that we want to open. And we want to use PCB Designer Pro with PSpice. And when we open this, uh, it's going to come up with a start page. And on here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. If I had an ex existing project, I could click on open, but here I want a new project. So I'm going to click on new, and I will give it a name, and let's just call this uh, Black uh, 2132 DC uh, tutorial. Now we'll click OK. Now let's go ahead and create an existing project with the analog ground symbol. That just starts out giving us a ground, which you always have to have a ground or a reference node on your test bench or schematic. OK. So once I open up a new project, it's going to give me a new project directory. And on here, uh, the, this is my project I just opened was a like 2132 tutorial. I'm going to expand this, and what we want to do is we want to open up a schematic. So I'm going to expand the schematic, and I'm going to start with a schematic called page one. Now I can rename this. In doing so, the problem I'm going to tackle is problem 4.14 in the textbook, uh, which is just a DC analysis problem. So let's go ahead and rename this to be uh, problem 4.14. And so I'm going to open the schematic by double clicking on it and it comes up and it just has this ground symbol here. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to start building this circuit. And I'll put, put this ground in a little bit more convenient location. And this is the circuit that I want to build. The circuit has a 40 volt source. It also has a 28 amp current source. And it has um, six resistors in it connected in this network. And so I want to build this with my SPICE model. So the first thing I need to do is place parts on this schematic. I can do that a couple ways. Up here I see a menu called Place. I can pull that down. I can do Place Part. If you see here, there's a little icon of the um, uh, integrated circuit with a plus for Add Circuit Part. Or I can find it over here on this icon uh, menu. So I'll just click on this here, or I can hit button P. And on this, it has a whole listing of parts that are all available to us. But what I want to do is I wanted to put a voltage source on, so I'm going to just start typing VSRC for voltage source. And here I see voltage source. And I'm going to double click on this, and now you see it's the voltage source appears over here in the window. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this voltage source um, somewhere on the window, and I'll place it right here. Now if you notice, um, over in the circuit, reference was chosen to be this node here, so I'll just go ahead and put the voltage source right above the ground. And I click. And you notice I click once, I saw a voltage source move, uh, available to place, and if I click again, I place another one. I don't want to. To get rid of that, I'm going to hit the escape key. Okay, that's gone, and to get rid of this, I'll select it and then hit the delete key and get rid of that that I don't want. So I put on my voltage source. Let's go ahead and now put on some resistances. So I'm going to go over here and type R, and it comes right up with R discrete or analog. We'll just go ahead and use the discrete R, double click on it, and now I have resistances. Now, if you notice, the resistor appears to be vertical, so if I place it, it's going to come up uh, vertical, which I I do have a couple of verticals, so I can put these on. But actually what I want is a horizontal. If I hit Control R, again that's Control R, you see the resistor is spinning around. I rotate it. Okay, again, that's with Control R is rotating that resistor. So I'll put, um, I, now that's horizontal, I'll put my horizontal resistors on. So I'll click it there, put a resistor there. I'm going to click one down here underneath it, and I have two more resistors 
one above here, and one below. Okay. Again, I still have that. I can hit the escape key to get rid of that resistor. Okay. All right. So now I have the six resistors placed on, is on this circuit. Next thing I want to do is put on this current source. All right, so what I want is I want an I source, current source, I, S, R, C. And here I see I have an I, S, R, C source, which is what I want, okay? So I'm going to double click on that I, S, R, C source. Now I have it active on the window. And if you notice, the arrow is pointing down, but over here my circuit is pointing, polarization is pointing up. I can leave it like this and put a negative 28 amps on it. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to control R, and I'm going to rotate it around. Okay, so now it's pointing up. And control R, now it's left, down, to the right, up. Okay, and I'll just place this on the test bench, or the schematic, and then again, escape, it goes away. Okay. Now, these labels here are kind of in the way. It's where I want to put a wire, so I can move these. I'll highlight the labels, and I'll use my mouse here to, gr to grab, and then I'll just move it over here uh, where it's in a convenient spot, so it won't be in the way. Okay. So here's all the parts for the circuit. Now I need to wire it up. So to wire it up, if you're over here, you see this icon uh, with a wire, place wire. I'm going to click on that. And now what I'm going to do is see these little boxes here. I can connect my wire from one component to the other. So for example, I can connect my wire from the top of the voltage source over to the resistance. I clicked on here, and as I move my wire around, you see it goes up to a little um, a grid mark, and then if I turn, it just makes a right angle turn for me. So I don't need to click and turn. I just come over here and find the part. See the red highlight? It tells me I'm over that terminal. I click, and I made the wire, and what I check is I have purple boxes on the terminals of the voltage source of the resistor, and that's good, and a purple box in the corner, okay? So that tells me those made those connections. I click here on this resistor, and I click here. I see that red. I click again. That connection's made. And I just keep clicking and making all my connections. Now I'm going to click here. And now you see that my connection is on that, with that wire and on the current source. Here. Connect. I'll click on R2, and then I come down to the wire, okay, and it gives me a red mark, and again, I can make that connection. Click from R6 to R4, red highlight, I click from R1 down to this wire here, make a new node, click, and so on, okay. Now I go ahead and make all my connections. Now here, the ground, I don't know why grounds do this, but it's a little bit under that pin. It makes a red. That's why I don't want to click up here. I want to click on that red where it makes a red dot. And then on 4, I'll click over here. And when I get a red dot, I'll click again. Now I can hit Escape. By hitting Escape, I'm done wiring. Okay? And now I have the arrow, so it tells me back done you know, the wire is turned off. Okay, I'll go ahead and do a save here. But now I put all the parts on, I've wired it, but now I need values. For example, I need a 40 volt source, a 20 amp current, uh, current source, and so on. So to do that, I'm gonna, I, I want a DC source, so I'm going to click on DC, and I'll double click. It's going to allow me to set the value of this DC source. Okay. So I'm just going to put 40, and it understands it has the units of volts. Click OK, and now it tells me it's deep, that's a 40 volt source. Same thing with the current source. I want DC. Click on DC, and I want 28, and it knows it's an amp. Okay. So see here, it's DC is 28 amps. Um, also, if I want to expand my view a little bit, I can put a zoom to region here, and I can draw a box around what I want to see more closely. I make it a little bit bigger. Okay. And again, I hit Escape to put that away. All right. So now I set my two sources, 40 volt DC source and 28 amp DC source. Um, now I need to check my resistors. Now, resistance has, each resistor has a name. For example, R3 is the name of this resistor. R is its value. So I'm going to double click on the R. And this is 3 ohms, this resistor, according to the diagram. So I'll click OK. This resistor here is 
one ohm, so I'll just click one. This resistor here is 40, and so on. And this is two. Now, what's convenient with this is that you know there's it's just you know on the order of less 100 ohms or less. I don't have k ohms or mega ohms, and so on. Um, well, let's assume that instead of 3 ohms and 1 ohm and 2 ohms, maybe these were 2k ohms. To do that, I would type 2k, and that would be equivalent to typing 2,000. Well, let's say it's 2 mega ohms, and I could type 2 meg, and that would be equivalent to 2 times 10 to the 6 ohms. Or maybe this is 2 milli ohms. I would type 2 little m for milli ohms, and so on. So there's a table here that if I have um, giga ohms, it's G, mega ohms, it's meg, kilo ohms, it's K, milli is little m, micro is U, nano n, pico p, femto f. So these are prefixes that we could use um, for units, and Spice would understand those to be the correct units. Okay, so this is two ohms, I'll just change it back to two. All right, so now I've set all my values. I'll go ahead and save, and now we're ready to simulate. Well, to simulate, we need to make sure we've set this up right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the P Spice menu right here, and it's this has been assigned a simulation profile. So I'm going to edit my simulation profile. It's going to bring up a window, which first time you bring it up, it it occurs down here on the uh, menu bar. I click on that, and here is my simulation setting edit menu. Under analysis, I want analysis type bias point. Okay, I'm going to apply. It's already set to bias point, so I'm good. So I don't need to do anything else here. So I click OK. Next thing I have all my values. I'm connected to ground. My sources are set. We're ready to simulate. So I can, again, under P Spice, I can either do Run, or I can type F11, or I have a Run button right here too, Run P Spice. I click on that, and it begins to execute the simulation of the circuit. And it ran a modified nodal analysis to calculate the node voltages at all these nodes. Now, in doing that, it's going to run up, it's going to bring up this um, uh, schematic menu for the simulation. I check over here in this window, there's no errors. All right, So I have no errors, it ran cleanly. And now I can look at my results. I'll minimize this window. Well, the bias point, what I can do is I can turn on this V, enable vol bias voltage display. And this will give me all the bias, all the node voltages. This node voltage is 40 volts, that makes sense, because it's across a 40 volt source between it and ground. Uh, this node here is 55 volts, minus 5, 68, minus 18, okay. Well, let's go over, and I also simulated this uh, using MathCAD, using a nodal analysis. So I set this to be a reference node here. Uh, these nodes VA, VB, VC, and VD. I, of course, MathCAD wants you to initialize these variables to, to anything. I just set them to zero. That's just a MathCAD thing. There's no constraints there. Then I applied KCL at these four nodes. For example, VA minus 40 over 3 plus VA minus VB over 40 plus VA minus VC over 2 equals 0 is that KCL. Did that for the four nodes. Then I used the find function to solve these set of equations. VA is 55 volts, which is exactly what um, P Spice predicts. VB is minus 5 volts which is exactly what P Spice predict, predicted. VC is 68 volts, and VD is minus 18 volts. Okay, so both of these are great, which is a nice check. Um, if I want to look at the branch currents, I can click on I up here, view enable bias current display. Okay, this five amps to the left of R3 tells me that five amps is flowing from this node to this node. So five amps is flowing in a counterclockwise direction in this loop. It's flowing into R3 from the right, it's flowing down through the DC source, it's flowing to the right through R4, okay? 
1.5 amps is flowing down through R1, 6.5 flowing to the right through R6, and to the left on R5, and so on. 21.5 flowing down, 28 flowing up, and of course that jives. Those are my currents. Now we can also calculate powers by clicking on uh, Enable Bias Power Display. So if I look at my DC source, I have 5 volts going from high potential to low potential, plus 200 watts. The source is effectively absorbing 200 watts of power. R3 is absorbing 75 watts, and so on. If I look at the current source, the voltage across here is 68 volts minus 18. So it's actually 86 volts across with tw and current 28 amps going from low to high potential. Power is minus 2.408 kilowatts. So this source is supplying 2.408 kilowatts of power. Okay. And you've add up all the blue, other blue boxes, they're going to sum to plus 2.408 kilowatts, which gives me power conservation. Okay. So that's um, how you would view the bias point results. Now, I'm going to show you a couple other things. Let's say um, I had bad ground connection, or right, a hanging node here. Okay, so let's delete these two wires. And I'll say, well, let's try to do a run now. So I have no ground, and I have two hanging uh, nodes. I try to do a run, and boom. Okay, it's, it gives me an error because of that open connection. All right, let's um, um, wire this back up. Well, let's wire it up without the ground. Okay, so now I have no ground in there. Try to simulate, and boom, errors are reported. Show the dialog box, and here I'm getting these errors. Okay, this node is floating. Node 14497, and so on. These are all floating. Well, that's because there's no ground. All right, so if I look at this node, it's 405. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, 504, that's one of the nodes that are floating. There's no reference node in this network. Okay. So these are the kind of errors that would give. So if I connect this up to my ground, boom. And then um, there we go. And now this this worked. Okay. So everything worked fine. Checked out, no errors, gives me the right results. Okay, so that's what happens if you have uh, uh, errors in your um, in your simulation. Okay, so that concludes this uh, brief tutorial on doing a uh, building a DC circuit. Uh, it's very straightforward. Uh, hopefully, um, uh, you can go ahead and reproduce on this on your own. Um, I invite you to do so, and. This will get you going and being a little bit dangerous with Orcad Spice.